Okay, this video popped up in my feed, in my subscriptions. Uh, I have not played Undertale. <laughs> I am not an Undertale person. I only know of it because of you guys. Uh, and because it got like so popular when it came out. And then there was the fandom wars. It was, it was trying times. You think Game of Thrones has a lot of death? Oh my god. The Undertale Wars. Oh. <clears throat> but uh, this is the death knell for Undertale was its fandom. This is by Nerdstalgic Gaming. Let's see what this is about. Let's see what this is. Go no further, fiend! Surrender now, or I'll show you my... SPECIAL ATTACK! Toby Fox's Undertale was more than a hit indie game. When it released in 2015, it became a gaming cultural touchstone. 2015, it feels on, like 500 years ago. the game started to sour until it seemed like there were more dissenters than actual fans. That isn't a particularly new concept in the industry, but what makes Undertale's story unique is the people behind its downfall. Rather than a greedy publisher or a misguided creative mind, Undertale's <laughs> ultimate undoing would come at the hands of the people so, like, who loved it most. This is just going to be complaining that fans are annoying or something. Beginning the game as is a so humble popular. Five thousand dollar yeah. Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, I don't think they're talking about the popularity of it. Earthbound ROM hacker Toby Fox. <clears throat> Undertale quickly snowballed into not only one of the most popular games of all time, but one of the internet's most prolific and pervasive fandoms. If you were on the internet in 2015 and 2016, Undertale was unavoidable. Gaming news publications <laughs> yeah. couldn't stop talking about it, YouTubers were putting out multi-part playthroughs and revealing the coolest in-game secrets, memes were being made at lightning <laughs> speed and spread across every internet forum imaginable. Oh, memes. And as the buzz got louder and harder to ignore, more people started to call themselves fans of Undertale. In just a couple of years, the Undertale fandom would rival and even surpass that of pre-established gaming and non-gaming franchises. The Sonics and the Super Hulocks of the world were quaking with the arrival of this new powerhouse that suddenly <laughs> appeared on the scene. But because Undertale was only one game, and a fairly short one at that, people had to start getting creative pretty quickly with their fan content. The traditional fan art, fan fiction, and fan theories that a normal franchise is subjected to was not enough for Undertale. Multiple alternate universes popped up online, imagining the in-game characters with swapped personalities, or in a different world, or in different relationships. And because this is the internet, Super many fandoms formed around these alternate by that point, I wouldn't know. I don't More fan works were created just for the alternate universes, including I don't know fully playable fan games. <laughs> And then those alternate universes were combined into a still ongoing animated web series with tens of millions of views made. But as much as people love the AUs, nothing could beat the adoration the fandom had for the original game. The most popular Undertale video on YouTube is a fan animated rap performed by two of the game's <laughs> oh characters my God. with 130 Jesus. million views. That's an inconceivable achievement for an indie game that only needed $5,000 to get off the ground. Now, you'll notice that so far we've spent very little time talking about what Undertale actually is, what type of game it is, what its story is like, who the main characters are. We haven't touched on any of it, and that's deliberate. Sure, the story about doing good even when it's difficult and being aware of how your actions affect the people you care about was pretty impactful. Combat yeah, was I done remember with a when, level of personality uh... we hadn't really seen before. And the characters like I remember I think it was you that like told me about some of it, but that a lot of people were getting like harassed when they would like live stream the game on how to play it by uh certain types of fans that would like sp end up spoiling it or force trying to force the streamer to play it the way they wanted them to play it. Like some people were just getting legit harassed. <sighs> ...were distinct and memorable, but none of that is part of Undertale's legacy. Yeah, but I'd Not argue anymore. that that happened to a lot of Undertale, Yeah, but I think, uh, and worse, has really been defined this, by it got fans. blown out of proportion the ones who propelled the for game this game because startup, of how popular it got so quickly. Eye ...and extended the life of the IP with brilliant fan creations. But while there is a so everything got symbiotic relationship between games and their fans, Undertale grew too fast and too unstable. So the cracks started to show very early. The fan base was ravenous. 
They were so complete in their consumption of the game and creation of content that That's they found themselves a bereft of new material in no time. Bad for yeah, no I think the re that reason no it was such a, uh, a bad no thing at first for Undertale no because of behind in the how of not only story-based Undertale is, I'll get you, but human. also... No matter how much spaghetti <laughs> it takes. <laughs> oh, this is good. Like but also Walters because of how, like, carcass clean until only the bones just remain, how the popular it became so quickly. The game of substance. Like, it and literally there, blew up. The whole thing started to collapse in on itself. Undertale was no it's longer It's calmed down a, a lot, game. yeah. Rather, it was a multimedia franchise that belonged not to Toby Fox, but to the internet. For a not insignificant amount of people, their introduction to Undertale was through fan-made material rather than the game itself. Let's remember that tens of millions of people Jesus. watched some of these Undertale fan animations. And an I can't even imagine making a YouTube video that fiction. would get millions upon millions upon millions of views. Among all the talented artists, writers, animators, musicians, <laughs> and game developers, there the was a not-so-secret <laughs> sub-community full of, <laughs> but let's just say, morally <laughs> the the objectionable content. It's not hard to imagine why potential Undertale players may shy away from a game when the first thing they come into contact with is a fan artist who ships two biological brothers together. Oh. <laughs> adult characters with the child protagonist. This is unfortunately not uncommon behavior in fan spaces. Oh, no. But with Undertale's Wild West type boom in popularity, the more abhorrent aspects of fandom were able to gain traction much quicker and much more visibly than they may have <laughs> otherwise. But even those Phoenix, who were participating in innocent celebrations of their favorite game <laughs> safe. Since the game had resonated so deeply with tons of people, many felt it was their sworn duty to protect their favorite characters and indeed the game itself from being mistreated. This resulted in some of the most ferocious gatekeeping in gaming fandom history. Not only were people sensitive about how canon characters were used in fan works, but they were very quick to judge anyone who didn't play the game exactly as they did. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> those who did not execute a flawless pacifist run were deemed to be as bad as real-life murderers. Wow. The most highly publicized example of this specific phenomenon was Markiplier's Undertale playthrough from 2015, which only got two episodes before Mark shut it down. In a later statement, he would tell his audience that the reason he stopped was, Everyone was disappointed in the way I was playing it. It was so pervasive that it made the entire experience not fun for me. His fans berated yeah, him for that... the voices he gave the characters, his decision to kill monsters, and his general lack of veneration for the game. Yeah, Much like that has done to, to other suck. You're trying to get to this game and everybody's literally ruining it for you. And just like Mark, many of those players likely stopped playing Undertale for fear of stirring up more vitriol. They lost all enthusiasm for what could have been a great experience. This strict code of how the game needs to be played. Yeah, th and this how is not strictly an Undertale problem. Is what I think it just became the death of Undertale because these were not the actions so of well known. The problems. This is the majority of the fans hunting down anyone who even because considered of Undertale's Undertale popularity in order to bully them into making the choices they had collectively deemed to be the right ones. Yeah. Otherwise, in the eyes of the fandom, they were doing it wrong and they were hurting the beloved Undertale characters. Not only does this attitude go against everything the interactive player-centered medium of video games stands for, but it's actively in contrast to the lessons that people were supposed to learn from Undertale. Kindness, compassion, and an understanding that bad choices don't inherently make you a bad person. There's no overstating how intense and widespread this way of thinking was. It got so bad that Toby Fox had to dedicate a large section of the FAQ for his next project, Deltarune, to assuring players that it had nothing to do with Undertale canon and wouldn't affect the choices they made in that game. It's actually kind of sad to read. If you completed Undertale, the ending and world are as you left it. If everyone was happy there, the people in the Undertale world will still be happy. So please don't worry about those characters and that world. It will remain untouched. It's as if Toby is literally pleading with fans to take a step back and look at the actual project at hand rather than a game he made several years ago. Wow, but when really, a Phoenix? Gets as bloated Damn. and irritated as Undertale's, there's no way to talk them down. And so, instead of engaging, more and more people have started to shy away from the game and its fans entirely. This, mixed with the overwhelming avalanche of content the fandom found itself buried in, led to dwindling interest. Today, the Undertale fandom is a shell of what it used to be. There are still diehard fans, and there always will be, but the golden age is long gone. Just as they had picked Undertale's bones clean, the fans cannibalized themselves until there was hardly anything left. 
And because of that, a little indie game went from one of gaming's crowning achievements to something a lot of us would prefer to forget. But it's not all bad. Despite the crushing weight of Undertale, Toby Fox is still creating. Deltarune, while not finished, is shaping up to be a pretty great game. Toby's dedication to his craft in the face of all that fame and complicated fandom drama is inspiring. And if you're anything like us, it fills you with determination. And that's all there is for today's video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Yeah, I if think you liked what you saw. <clears throat> be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to Nerd Saga I think Gaming this could so be applied to basically in the meantime, fandoms in below. general. Were you an Undertale fan in 2015? Like Are there's always going to be a toxic now? fan group in anything. But I think Undertale. Like, I think it became such is inspired. I think it became such a big deal during that time because of uh, how popular Undertale became so quickly. So Undertale unfortunately became like, how do I put it? It became basically the spokesperson of toxic fandom because of how popular it got. Like, even though it's in every medium and in every game that's ever been made, unfortunately, Undertale was the main character of that story, basically. <laughs> like, everybody wanted to talk about it. Everybody wanted to make videos about it. Everybody wanted to have their spotlight on it. It's... <sighs> And it's unfortunate, because even though I've never played Undertale, I do know, like, it's supposed to be, like, this great, passionate game. Like, it, it I don't know. Oh, yeah, I I heard about Deltarune, but I don't know anything about it because, again, I'm not an Undertale person, so I just never got interested in it, and especially after it got so popular and the fandom wars over it. I'm just like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I feel like this video glosses over a lot of- yeah. To be fair, it was short. It's like, it's under 10 minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> I think there's... They need to do like a whole documentary on on the toxic fandom in video games. Not just for Undertale. That'll be interesting to see.